Hi everyone. So yeah, the title of my talk is I print t-shirt for a living, but and I also write PHP code. Right? Yeah. Thanks. So I can sit down. So um, I've been in the community for a very long time. I've I've actually presented in quite a number of uh, different events, uh, but believe it or not, this is the first software meetup that I've ever presented in. Never presented in a software meetup. So, yeah. So, um, so I'm gonna. I think most of you, does anyone have ever met me before? Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So basically, about me. Um, the introduction about myself. I like to introduce. My, I like to describe myself as a maker slash engineer slash designer. Because um, <clears throat> I do all those three things. Um, I do write in the usual HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Uh, I also play with hardware, mainly the Arduino. I been I also do Photoshop and Illustrator. I was actually. Uh, I was I started in the community about in 2008. I was helping to run this uh, meetup called Creative Crew, which was actually the official Adobe meetup. Okay, uh, so I've actually used Photoshop and Illustrator for a very long time. I've actually gone through like the first version of Photoshop I used was version three, uh, not CS3 but version three, which I've gone through about 15 versions of Photoshop already. And I do 3D printing. I do woodworking as well. Okay. So um, I'm in the printing industry, and I'm not in the tech industry. Okay, how many of you actually here uh, not in the tech industry and don't write code professionally, and or all of you actually are professional coder? No, I'm the only one. The only one. Yeah. So this is interesting. So I thought this was interesting because uh, I will be coming from a from a point that I'm not a professional coder. Okay, I don't write code professionally. I've never ever written code professionally either. Okay. But I do write code. Okay. Um, what I do is I am actually is, is I'm a family business and I do printing services and I also import and export printing equipment and supplies. And this is a very old business, started in 1992. Okay. Um, my coding history. So like what Zion said, um, I started coding in 1995. Uh, back then we were using a language called Turbo Pascal. Uh, for those, I actually have a picture here for those who have never ever seen this. Okay, this is how a screen of Turbo Pascal looks like. The vintage blue and yellow. Huh? <laughs> is it? No, I don't know. <laughs> Last time, you know, we, are, we are students, we don't write comments. We just write the code, it runs, and then we have no idea why it runs. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So I've been friends with Zion for like twenty three years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then I nineteen ninety nine went to NTU. I I start I learn computer engineering. First used PHP in uh, two thousand and one. That's version four. And I graduated in two thousand three. And so from two thousand three to two twenty eighteen, this has been fifteen years since I officially did not uh, do do. Um, do coding in like for school work or for or for a job, right? So fifteen years is a very very long time, right? And uh, I like to exp like so I like to share what how I actually continue to actually do coding in these fifteen years, although it's not part of my job. Okay, so what I actually started doing was that I started doing my own uh, company web websites. Um, so I was always use and I always use a LAMP stack. <coughs> And because when I started in uh, back then in uh, 2005 and all that, you know, you don't have WordPress and CMS and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, I'm a very traditional person whereby I actually design and code everything from scratch. Yeah, because I, I don't like to use WordPress because I find that WordPress is very obvious that it's WordPress. So whenever you go to a website, it's like, oh, this one WordPress one. So I want, I want my website to look different. You know, I, and... That's the more the designer part of me, whereby I can show you. Uh, this is the latest website that I've coded. It looks a bit big, but you see, I like to to change how it looks like. Uh, I like menus like this, whereby all my products are seen at one shot. You know, stuff like this. 
And this is all coded with uh, PHP. Okay. Uh, just a quick demo there. So, and then, um, so and then around, as it goes on, then around 2005, what happened is that, you know, we had this thing called web apps that appeared. Uh, the first one was probably, most famous one was probably Gmail, whereby suddenly you could do uh, email in, in the cloud. You know, it was a very different way of actually doing stuff, right? And that made me, uh, made me realize, you know, PHP plus MySQL doesn't always mean website now. Last time it was always like, oh, I do my company website and stuff. But then I realized that, you know what, I can actually write stuff to actually make stuff in my company work better. You know, I can write apps to help uh, the company, right? And so, when you write your own web apps for your own company, right, there are a few pros, okay? Number one is that if it breaks, uh, nobody will come after you. Okay? Especially when you're in a family business and you're part of the family. Okay? <laughs> if you're in a family business, you're not part of the family, different story. Uh. Okay, then your boss can't find you, but you're part of family business, you're in the family, uh, okay, different thing. Okay, uh, it doesn't look good, don't bother, just use it. Okay? Um, this third one is actually a very, it's a very good pro because it's like, um, if it's a feature that is very, very time-consuming, very troublesome to write, you just say, okay, I'm not going to write it. And like, and, and uh, so, for example, I'll give you an example, it's like a lot of my apps don't have edit feature. Because when you to edit something, you have to pull data here, pull data there, everything, and sometimes it's always just like, uh, I spell the thing wrongly. You know, so for me, I just say, if you make a mistake, just tell me, I just change one line in the database. <laughs> Set. And I'm not going to bother to write the whole edit feature, you know. So I save a lot of time doing stuff like that. And uh, you can bother less with security. You need to bother with security. Uh, okay, so this is an interesting thing about um, what I've learned from business is that we, we talk about all about cyber security, people hacking and everything, but actually the most common way that the business suffer, right, is your own employee uh, download the entire database and run off to the next job. You, you can hack, you can, you can stop and firewall everything, right, but internally, right, the guy download, uh, save, export as CSV and run off, right? Then you cannot do it. Just, I've heard this so many times from so many of my uh, other customers in the industry, you know? The people start their own business and have their whole database. So security is a really a very interesting stuff. So what have I actually made? Um, I've actually wrote, written an entire point of sale system for my, for my company. Uh, why would I write an entire point of sale system is because you know, I think a lot of you will probably say that, you know, you can buy it, right? Uh, the reason is because my, my, uh, the company started in 1992 and there are some processors which are still in 1992 and they do not want to change it from 1992. And so the new POS system does not support the 1992 way of thinking and therefore you have to create a POS system that supports 1992 way of thinking together with <laughs> the current way of thinking. So it's a very weird POS system. Um, I can show you guys if you're interested later. I do, uh, this is a much bigger system that I wrote. Uh, I have smaller systems like this one is an artwork calculator. I'll give you a quick demo. So in, when you do uh, printing, right, we always have this problem. We have, say that uh, we have a sheet of paper that's A3 size. We want to print like maybe a image that's 90 mm by 60 mm. And I need to print 1,000 pieces of this for the PHP conference. And each piece costs $15. How many should I have? And so this is a very simple app which uh, automates something that we do every day. Right? Total, I'll need 56 sheets of paper. Straight away, I know how much uh, material I need to use. And then, you know, the customer, and what happens? The customer will change my, you say, no, I don't want it. I want it to be 85 by 60 now. So you can change 85, 60, click calculate again. Then, you know, maybe it might change, might, maybe it might not change. And uh, yeah, so these are the stuff, small little stuff that I actually make for my company. I have a CSV file resorter. Uh, what it does is that, like, um, for example, like when, for the PHP conference, you guys have all the name tags, right, with all the names on it. Every single name is different. So there is a system that actually allows you to 
put in a CSV file and actually generate and print out everything. The problem is that when you actually print out everything, they go, the names are from A to Z follow this sequence to the next page to the next page. And we actually print multiple pages and we stack on top. And then, then we put it and we cut and we stack again and everything goes wrong. Right? Because then they are no longer sorted. So this CSV sorted is actually magically unsorted it so that when after you restack it, it magically sorts itself back. Yeah. And uh, over the weekend, I did a simple email parser. And uh, lastly, the stock inventory software. And this is the this is probably my uh, biggest project and what I wanted to share with you guys today. So I already gave that demo. Okay, so the stock inventory software. So basically what my company does, I said we import and we export printing media. And as a result, that uh, we actually have a lot of different kind of products. There's more than 100 over different kinds. And we don't employ someone to actually uh, manage the warehouse. Actually, you are looking at the person who managed the warehouse. Uh. But, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'm the warehouse manager, and that's just one of the sub small little jobs that I have to do among the other many uh, other ones. Right? Um, the warehouse and the office are not in the same location, and that is the biggest problem that we face. The office is in, is in a Although they are, they are still within walking distance, but the problem is that they are not in the same physical location. And we need to know how much stock we have. Right? So, so version zero was how we actually need, we did this was that we actually record it on pen and paper. Obviously, that's what you start to do, right? And what will happen is that when we count, when we actually physically count our products every time, we don't actually count everything. We don't count 100 every time. We will count maybe this time we count these you know, five different products, then the next time we count the other three products, then the other product there. And so we have a lot of pieces of paper, a lot, and some of them might be the same product with a lot of different kind of paper, and you do not wish it's the latest record. And that was the problem that we have. And so what happens is that they will always call the warehouse manager, me, to go and find out how much stock we have, and I always have to count again, right? So back in 2010, I decided that, you know what? Instead of writing on a piece of paper, it's very simple. My SQL, PHP, you know, just put in the quantity and the date where you put in this quantity, right? Then every time, it'll just show you the latest quantity based on the date. And you can see from any location because we put it on the web, right? So that was the base idea. Then the first improvement I made was that, you know, um, Besides keeping track of stock that is physically there, I also started to record what I order in. Okay, so uh, besides being the warehouse manager, I'm also the person who orders the stock to bring in. And that is actually a very um, complicated task to order stuff in because you order too much, ends up on the, on the shelf for too long. Order too little, you don't have anything to sell. Right? So by uh, recording all these... Uh, what I order in constantly, I'm able to forecast how much I, this this uh, this particular product, how how much is selling, you know, and uh, when was the last time I ordered, how many I ordered, so the next time how much do I order, right? And this software also allows me to give analysis of you know each product throughout the whole year, how much I ordered, okay, and also I added along the way I added a print function to. Uh, to allow uh, us to print out, and then they can just go and write down how much they actually counted. Okay, and then, um, and then after that, I made a second improvement to the software, which allows me to help me to um, um, help me to to remember what I want to order. Because when you order stuff, there's always this thing called a minimum order quantity, and you don't reach that minimum order quantity, they will not actually take your order. So you might say that I need to order this, but I need to combine. So I need, so product A, I remember I need to order about this amount, but I still cannot order yet. Then product B, product C starts to go low, then we start to keep putting into the order. And finally, we have enough, then we say we place an order. Right? And this, uh, I, I also put it into the, the software to actually help me remember what I need to order. And my latest improvement, uh, just about a few months back, is I'm able to auto-generate what I think I should order. So now it actually helps me to decide as well. 
And <clears throat> the other thing that I was able to do with this project is that uh, I'm able to calculate what the age of the product on the shelf. So how long is the shelf? How long has this been uh, on the shelf? And whether should we do something about it? Can we sell it? We might not be able to sell it because it's too old. Or should we start to you know start using this product more and stuff like that? Okay. And uh, yeah. So, but okay, there are other areas to besides besides uh, software. There are other areas to explore in terms of what I'm doing here. Okay. And uh, so, as I said, I also do hardware. Uh, how many of you here play with an Arduino? Heard of an Arduino? Right. Think how, how many of you actually play with an Arduino? Two only. Okay. And the second thing is the ultrasonic sensor. How many of you know what that is? The same two. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's. Oh, yes. Michael. Sorry. You're too far right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so an ultrasonic sensor is a very simple. It's a very simple uh, piece of hardware. It's, it's a sensor whereby there are, you see there's like two speakers. One will actually, the transmitter one is a receiver. One will transmit out an ultrasound, meaning you actually cannot hear it. Uh, it hits an object, it bounces back, the receiver hears the ultrasound, and based on the time taken, it's able to know actually how far this distance is. Right. And so it's a very simple device, and it's used in a lot of, uh, it's used as a beginner's, uh, when you learn the Arduino, they always use this as a beginner uh, tool for you to learn. Right. But what I did was that somewhere along, somewhere down the road, uh, 2014, 2015, I suddenly had this idea. It's very simple. Right. I, buy, I sell things in boxes. Right. If I build a shelf of a known height, I put an ultrasonic sensor on the top. I measure the distance that is left. That means shelf height minus height of boxes. I can divide and I know how many boxes there are. Right. It's a very simple idea. Right, everyone who uses an ultrasonic sensor usually use it like uh, you know the robot that will go through and then you see something in front you stop because it detects something in the front. But I changed the idea and I said I put it on top. This allows me to measure the distance and I'm able to know it. Right. So uh, I, I I made a prototype with cardboard and yeah it works. You know I'm able to to detect how many uh, boxes there are. It's able to count so called. Right. And then at Geek Camp 2015, I heard about this device called the ESP8266. How many of you heard of this magical number? Okay. Yeah. So the ESP8266 is an Arduino, it's a microcontroller, it has Wi Fi, and it's very, very cheap. Okay. So what I'm able to do now is that the Arduino, because if you see this Arduino, right, it only has USB. The ESP8266 has Wi-Fi, which is actually what I need. So now suddenly this idea that I have, after I, this sensor counts the boxes, I'm able to give, send it somewhere, right? So all it does is that it does a HTTP post. Uh, you write a PHP page that accepts the, the, the post data, and you're able to just put it into an SQL database, right? And so when you do that, so stock taking becomes automated. You don't have to count anymore. Right, and so how cheap is the ESP8266? It's only three dollars fifty cents. One ultrasonic sensor only costs one dollar. Right, you go to a professional uh, company that does like inventory for you is gonna you know they'll charge you ten to twenty thousand dollars to build a small little thing. Right, three fifty one dollar. So. Um, so what happens is that this is another, so in 2015 I started this and along three years down the road I, I kept working on this. And so I was able to build a system whereby one microcontroller is able to control 16 ultrasonic sensors. Because you cannot put, if you put one microcontroller with one ultrasonic sensor, right, then if you have 100 product, uh, you suddenly when they all on, right, the router is going to have a request for 100 IP addresses, which will go crazy, you see. So what you do is you have to make sure that you cannot have so many microcontrollers around. So you have one microcontroller, control 16, and do they have wired up 114 of these sensors? 
right? And every day they, they will, they'll wake up in the morning at around 7.30 when no one's working, it counts everything. It shuts down, up the, so the SQL database is updated. And then um, at the end of the day, at around nine something, it will actually count one more time. And then you'll say, okay, morning was this amount, night time down this amount. There's a difference. This is actually how much was the difference. Uh, and it sends you uh, a report on Slack. Okay. And so Slack integration was another thing which I realized was really good. Yeah. It's, and so these are some photos of actually how it looks. So you can see, um, I have no idea why the mouse doesn't work. Okay, so you can see the ultrasonic sensor at the top of the box there and on the top of my shelving over there. I think you can see, right? I can walk with this, right? Yes. So it's over here and over here. Right. Um, this is a this is a bigger view zoom out. Uh, so you can see the ultrasonic sensor at the top on the right hand side are the the, the ESP8266 microcontrollers. Uh, this is my warehouse, um, and so you can see all the the microcontrollers are actually uh, attached to the side of the of the actual racking. So I don't actually have to build shelves. It actually works in uh, in those uh, regular racking that you see. Okay, so let me show you uh, how this software that I built. So, there we go. It's a bit big. Okay, so um, this is the latest one, which I have. Uh, so you, you can basically view stock. And so from the different suppliers, it will click and... Yeah, so what we have, I need to zoom out a little bit. Oh, never mind. So with every product, it's able to show you how much uh, stock I have. Over here is one, uh, it'll tell you the last stock take was how many days ago. Uh, I'm on a local host, so this, so this data are all wrong. Okay, don't bother about the data, it's, it's not the most updated one. Um, so 67 days ago with this symbol, this is a smart shelf symbol, which means that this is actually uh, um, automatically taken by the, the controller. And over here, a pencil icon, this is if we were to write it by hand. So what you do is that you take this, this value plus this value together and add up and you get two. Uh, it tells me my last order quantity, which was 10. I ordered 10 and that was 909 days ago, right? Uh, so this is basically what we have, and it, and uh, so what I have is also color coding. Like green means I have enough stock, red color, uh, I don't have enough stock, orange I'm getting dangerously low on stock, right? Yeah, your mouse over you can see uh, like two on the shelf, eighty in the warehouse, right? Uh, go back here. A bit slow. So um, you can view my orders. So every order that come in, I'll actually use this uh, order in function, and you'll be able to see like what did I order on like on the twenty fifth of uh, uh, September. Okay, I ordered this amount. I can do at anal uh, order analysis. So, for example, I could say a certain product uh, from March to today uh, generate, and it will generate like every month actually how much did I order in over here. So all of these actually help me, is more helps my day-to-day -day work so that I can actually know how everything is working. So nothing here to really see. So uh, this is... So when I, when I was telling you that when I actually uh, need to make a new order, so something like this, um, what happens is that it will show me my current amount that I have. I am planning order 25, the new amount will be 33. So the good thing is that when I do it this way, right, uh, this current amount will always change based on what really is the current. 
So it's like today is eight, right? Then maybe one week later, it became six. So it start to go six and then 25, then it will add together and it's like actually now 31, right? And then I just add, um, when I want to add in a, uh, this is really slow. So I add in another product. Right, so it show me current quantity, last order, how much, this new quantity. So if maybe I order 40, it will say that, okay, 64, and add it in over here. And then I can save it if I want. All right, and stuff like that. So that is to help me with my ordering. I have, uh, yes, I have this age analysis or so. So this was what I talked about. It's so slow. Okay, so for example, um, so you, so age analysis, like for example, this product at the moment I have 82, 82 in quantity, right? The last order was 40. 40 uh, piece was 40 pieces and that was 76 days ago. So it's still in my green region, which is actually good, right? 100 days is when I'll say that, okay, things start to, you have to be careful. 200 days is when we say it's really bad, right? So the, pre so the reason why there's two lines because uh, 82 is bigger than 40. So it means that they are still from the previous order, right? The previous order, uh, would be uh, 100 pieces, and that was 153 days ago. So this is the bar that is actually more important, right? Because like I say 82 is bigger than 40. So I mean, these 40 pieces are still within this 82. It means I have 42, which actually is from the previous order, which is older. Yeah, yeah these are all in the red and stuff. Okay, finally, let me see what else I have. Yeah, so I could also generate order here. And this is, for example, will actually give me a, a, the, the system automatically uh, decides like, okay, you know, this is the amount you have. You should maybe considering ordering this amount. So I don't actually have to keep thinking like how much should I order. I just actually look at this and does it make sense? Then yeah, from there I'll just order. I will choose order or I do not choose to order this quantity that he gives me. Okay, and finally, uh, show you this interesting thing. So the smart shelf, which is the hardware plus software integration, right? So there are eight controllers and each controller has like say 16 sensors. Uh, it's probably not a good one. Let's try number seven. Okay, has 16 sensors over there, right? And each sensor is tied to one particular product, right? And so what I'm able to do is that I'm able to say, uh, I'm able to edit and say, okay, now I change this shelf. Instead of putting this product, which is 4034, I'm gonna change to another product, which is maybe 4016, okay? And then I can save, then that, then I just change the status of that shelf to, to, to count a different kind of product. And then that shelf after counting will say, okay, this is 4016 now, it's gonna update the, the database at 4016, you know? Yeah, so the whole thing can be actually uh, configured to change as and when I need. And on the controller itself, this would be, yeah. So this is the actual controller, I brought it here. Power it on. Guys probably cannot see this. Uh, you guys can come and see it later. But what it does is that I can actually, I've actually made this controller that is able to have a configuration mode, which gives me an IP address of this guy, which is 163.43.168. Okay, so when you actually, when the, the laptop and the controller is on the same Wi-Fi network, which is on my phone. I'm able to ping this controller, uh, load the data from this controller, print the configuration of this controller, okay? And I can uh, reset the controller. For example, now this is uh, 
set a sensor number, ID number 15, I can change it to maybe 20 and click save. Then I clear lock and I print configuration again. And now you see ID is now at 20. So over the, this has, we are able to, this, this 350 controller is actually very powerful. It's able to run as a HTTP uh, web server as well. So this is able to take uh, post and get requests, post, uh, post requests. So you're able to send, just say, okay, uh, this is the configuration, update it, and it actually stores everything in here. All right, okay, uh, that's about my demo. So let me go back to the slide. Okay, so um, that's about all that I actually have. So what I like to, what I actually like to, uh, to, to as a closing note is that uh, you know, for me I I stop, I stop learning coding, uh, in an academic sense since two thousand and three. But you know you have to continue to always learn because. Like I say that those fifteen years, if I actually were, if I decided that oh I'm gonna just print T-shirts because now I my engineering degree no more use I'm just gonna print T-shirt and just uh, do that kind of a business then you know I'll be actually quite I won't be able to do all this today, right? Um, and that fifteen years I can tell you that it changed a lot, right? And what I say is that most of the technology that you see in this project did not exist when I graduated, right? There was no such thing as an Arduino, there was no such thing as AWS or Digital Ocean whereby they give you a server and it's totally empty. You know, uh, most of my deployment are actually on Docker, which is really fantastic because you see all the different web apps that they have, they are all in separate Docker containers and we able to bring down and to pull them down and bring them up and change a new version I just I just shut down this uh, container and bring out a new one, right? Um, and be curious and don't be afraid to fail because I realized that like when I asked you guys like how many of you actually touched a uh, Arduino, which was, this was actually the the the, the response I was, I was expecting because I realized I've, I've gone to hardware meetups, I've gone to software meetup. I realized that software people like to think that oh I'm a software person, I don't want to touch all the wire later I get electrocuted. You know, you know, don't be afraid to try. Because you see, if I did not do hardware and software together, there's no way I can actually create something like this. You know, this whole system works because it's a, it's a combination of hardware and software together, uh, working together to form one very interesting ecosystem for myself, right? Okay, uh, and with that, the last slide I have is that I print t-shirts for a living and if you <laughs> want to print t-shirts, please come and find me. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I do. I do the. I do for a lot for the developer conference. Like uh, I did for WordCamp and PHP conference, iOS conference. So if you guys want that, uh, please come and find me. That's what I do for a living. I don't write code for a living, like I say. Uh, that's my Twitter hand, Twitter handler, and that's my email. You know, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And if you have any questions, now that's actually the, the end of my presentation. Thank you. Yes, I realized I went through this whole thing and I did not show you a single line of PHP code. It was really done in PHP. You just have to trust me. <laughs> okay, uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning,